Hey, this is Josh from The Verge, and we're taking a look at uh, Windows 8, the consumer preview on a tablet versus the current market leader, the iPad uh, 2 with iOS 5 on a tablet. So first off, uh, let's just look at basics. Now, Windows 8 uses a lot of, at least in the Metro interface, uses a lot of uh, gestures and, and um, interface paradigms that are really different than, than what the iPad uh, than what the iPad does. Now, the iPad has some pretty basic operation, right? It's got, you can swipe through home screens. Um, you obviously hit the home button. You can go to search uh, or swipe over to get to search when you're at your home screen. If the, uh, if the iPad is turned off, you can hit the home screen to wake it up and unlock it like that. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you jump into an app, for instance, let's say YouTube, looks something like that. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can double tap on the home button. Uh, go over here to uh, the music uh, controls, brightness control, uh, rotation lock control, so on. Very straightforward. Uh, you've probably seen it before. Uh, and then there's also in, in this version of, uh, in iOS 5, you've got a couple of gestures. Um, so you've got this four finger pinch to get back to the home screen. Um, if you're in an app, you can use four finger swipes to go to uh, previous apps or uh, back to the the app previous to the previous app. Um, pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, that's about it for gestures on the iPad. Of course, you've got Notification Center. Uh, that's about it for gestures uh, besides in-app stuff like Pinch to Zoom and the others. On the other hand, Windows 8 uh, is very gesture heavy for lots of different things. So, obviously, this is your, your uh, main home screen. You see all your uh, tiles here and apps. Uh, you can pinch on this screen to get an overview of your apps. You can also swipe up and get your app menu here. So this is different for, this is contextual for each app. So for instance, if we're in calendar, um, you get a different app menu there. You can swipe down from the top to close an app. Um, and uh, there's the charm menu, which you get from uh, swiping uh, on the right side there. Get these various controls settings, devices, start, share, uh, search, et cetera. Just want to show off a little bit of multitasking. Um, you can swipe in apps that you've been using from the left like this, and uh, you can actually uh, place them in the sidebar as we've shown before, like so. And uh, it's pretty handy once you get the hang of it. Let's go to The Verge. So while we're loading this, that should be loading in the background. And uh, yep, there it is, loaded up, or at least partially loaded up. And uh, it's pretty handy, pretty amazing, actually. Uh, it's also amazing that nobody has thought of this yet. But uh, it, it's a little, the implementation's a little tricky that you get the hang of it. Uh, I haven't, don't think I've quite gotten the hang of it, but I'm getting there. Um, it's kind of cool because you can actually read your mail uh, while you're working with another app, which is kind of amazing. Um, so as you can see, it's a very gesture-heavy uh, UI. And uh, you're constantly sort of moving from these different sides of the, of the tablet to get around. Um, you know, obviously you've got the standard stuff where you can just tap to get into something. The iPad obviously handles multitasking differently. You've got the multitasking bar down here, uh, these gestures here, and of course pinch to get back. Um, not that intuitive, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, four fingers is a lot of fingers to use, uh, and frankly, it's just uh, it's cumbersome to do it. This is a weird gesture. Maybe you get used to it after a while. I never have. I prefer to multitask the old-fashioned way, um, but uh, fairly straightforward compared to Windows 8. So if you want to add an account in uh, Mail, you open it up and uh, pull up the app menu, go to Accounts, and then there's a Add Account here. Um, you can, uh, obviously there's a couple of options right off the bat, Hotmail, Google, and Exchange. Uh, you put in your data, and away you go. It syncs, automatically syncs messages. So you can go through messages here. There's no threaded messaging, actually, which is interesting. It's a, it's a pretty bare-bones application. Um, and uh, you can look at your folders. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really pretty stripped down as far as, um, as, far as these, uh, as far as mail apps go. But uh, it gets the job done. Uh, so you can uh, select multiple messages by swiping on them, like so is fairly intuitive. And uh, then you can uh, delete like that. Now on the iPad, uh, starting a new mail account is 
fairly similar. Um, just put in a name here, get option to sync there. Now, uh, what's interesting is that um, on the Windows tablet, it doesn't really tell you if it's syncing, uh, if it's syncing your contacts or not. And I, I don't know if it is. Oh, it is. Well, this might be from my other account. Uh, hard to say. Nope, it's not. These are just strangers. Complete strangers. Don't know these people. Frankly, I'm a little concerned. Now, let's take a look at the browser. It's Internet Explorer, of course, on uh, the Windows 8 tablet, and it's really quite good, uh, quite fast. And uh, there are a couple of drawbacks, however. For instance, uh, it does not display our opacity correctly on our, some of our tiles on the site. So that's a little, was a little disappointing to find out, but you know, no one's perfect. I mean, up until recently, you couldn't see Typekit fonts on Android, so we shouldn't feel too bad. But, uh, you know, I think you can see here both of these uh, devices are just make it, you know, doing a pretty good, uh, they've got a pretty good representation of the site here. Scrolling is really fast and smooth on the uh, Windows 8 tablet. Uh, you can double tap and also pinch to zoom, which is super fast. Uh, definitely impressed with the, with the speed of the browser. Uh, you also get, you know, it's a little weird. You get your tab menu up here and your uh, URL field down here. Um, it's, again, it's very stripped down in comparison to uh, something, well, I mean, even compared to the iPad, it feels a little more stripped down. They're clearly going for uh, minimalism here. Uh, in fact, there's some weird stuff that, that I found uh, where it's tough to save. If you want to save an image, it's not that easy to just grab the image. So there's no real option here to grab this which I found a little troubling. Uh, I was trying to save a desktop image on, uh, of course, on the iPad. It's a little bit easier. So there's some, some basic functionality that doesn't seem to be here yet, uh, you know, unless I'm just doing something totally wrong. Uh, there just does not seem to be a way to select things. Um, so it made it very hard for me to decorate my Windows 8 tablet. But uh, all in all, not a, not a deal breaker or anything. Uh, let's take a look at search. So on the iPad, you can swipe here and start searching for something uh, that wants to search the web and Wikipedia here. You want to grab uh, from the charm bar, you can start searching. Let's do for hello. And uh, it doesn't really uh, make it clear. You can, I believe you can search. Um, yep, there you go. So it's a little bit, a little bit less intuitive, but you get a lot more options. You can also go and search the Microsoft Store here, um, and there are no results for hello. Of course, very disappointing. Um, so less options, really. On, it's kind of annoying. In fact, I've, I've come up against this that less options for searching on the iPad. I actually prefer the implementation on Windows 8. So this is the uh, calendar. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, actually, pretty good usable interface. For, um, for looking at your schedule, get a few different views. Uh, you can see here that uh, Thomas Houston was moving today, except instead he was actually working on uh, Windows 8 stuff. But uh, actually really fast, extremely snappy. Uh, you want to pinch the zoom, but you can't pinch the zoom. And that is the calendar. By comparison, you've got the calendar here on the iPad, which is uh, frankly a little less intuitive and uh, but a lot has a lot more leather in it, so I think that's kind of got a, you know something going for it. Um, you can go to the day and uh, create an event here, and uh, you can move them around. On so on uh, Windows 8, so a little more complicated if you want to cha quickly change the time of something. You gotta pull one of these guys. So not quite as intuitive. So all in all, very different interfaces. Um, I actually find a lot of stuff in Windows 8 to be more intuitive than what they're doing on the iPad. Uh, but the iPad is, of course, much more straightforward, very simplistic, uh, and isn't meant to do double duty as a computer. Now, you kind of forget, but you end up at this screen <laughs> uh, every once in a while. And uh, this is stuff, I don't even know how this stuff appeared. This is just hanging out in the background. Uh, and uh, in all honesty, um, this, is, this is the thing that I want to avoid on a tablet. So. Uh, I just wish that, that you could stay in, in this world uh, instead of having to go back to the, to the desktop environment. I think tablet to tablet, if you just talk about Metro and the iPad, Microsoft is giving Apple some pretty stiff competition. 
Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of form factors, um, what price points, and what kind of software developers ultimately make for it. But my feeling is that Windows 8 is off to a pretty promising start as a tablet OS. Thank you.